Welcome to r slash pro revenge where OP exposes a person for abusing a disabled child. Background. About 10 years ago, my landlord died. Or at least the person who owned the place we were renting. The property managers had been delightful, but whoever inherited wanted to sell, so the house was for sale. Enter douchebag. We'll call him Jack, who decides to buy the place. Now, ours was the top floor, i.e. an attic converted into a suite of a house, less than 35 square meters, that's 375 square feet. The bathroom was literally where the stairs up to the top floor used to be. The place was tiny. Jack came to check out the place, as you should before buying a place. He had one of those Bluetooth earpieces in, and I can't even remember if he even acknowledged us. He spent about 30 to 45 seconds in our suite. Next time we hear from him is about a month later. Apparently, he'd bought the place. He stops by to give us a notice of rent increase, effective in six months, the legal minimum, from 485 bucks to 795. The place is not worth that much. We say nuts to that and decide to buy a house, since what the hell, it's not much more per month. Surprise to anyone who's never bought a house, it was more than just mortgage payments. We give him all the required notice to move out. We move and clean the place up really well. Mind you, when my partner moved in, it was not especially clean, and we happen to have the move-in inspection which mentions this. Jack decides to try and scam us for 80 bucks of our damage deposit for cleaning. He doesn't provide the required forms, just says, I'm going to hold $80 from your damage deposit for cleaning. We respond with, um, no, you're not. Jack, assuming we need the cash for our next damage deposit or bills and we'll settle for anything. Take it or I'm going to keep your whole deposit. Cue revenge. So he decides to just keep the whole deposit of 485 bucks. I file paperwork with the rentals men who, unsurprisingly, after their investigation rule in my favor. He's ordered to refund the whole deposit, but Jack decides not to pay. And the rentals men doesn't have any enforcement powers. So I have to go to the local sheriff's office. They can send a legal demand letter for the deposit and costs, but it'll cost me 100 to 150 bucks, I forget, up front. Sure, go ahead. Jack decides to ignore the sheriff's kindly letter. Sheriffs say they can start proceedings to recover the debt plus costs, but I again have to pay up front, about 250 bucks, and it might take quite a while. I guess most people quit at this point, being out of pocket 700 bucks, throwing more money at the problem and maybe having to wait months didn't appeal to them. And there's also a chance you never collect. I chose to pay the sheriffs. They sent another, less friendly letter to Jack. But here's the best part. Now that they're recovering a debt, they're going to recover all of the outstanding judgments against him. And apparently he's tried this stunt before. They send him another couple letters. Pay up or else. Jack chose else. Then they seize title to Jack's giant white SUV. I can't remember what it was, but not a cheap one. They didn't physically take it away or anything, but they gave him 30 days to pay all the judgments against him or they would take it and sell it at auction. Somehow he all of a sudden found the money. My share. $485 plus $150 plus $250 equals $885. The other people who registered judgments but not paid to start the collection processes were about $5,000 more. I can't remember how long the whole process took. At least six months though. Too long didn't read. Landlord tries to scam us for 80 bucks for cleaning when we move out. Ends up costing him almost $6,000. Our next Reddit post is from Weep Sasoishi. I can finally talk about this. After years of threats of legal action, etc., it's now officially over. Back in 2003, when unemployed, I decided to volunteer at a local education facility that specializes in helping out young to late teen kids with Down syndrome or high levels of autism, which causes them to be antisocial. I hate not being able to work, so volunteering not only got myself out of my boring, do nothing everyday schedule, but also gave me a positive when applying for work. Everyone likes someone who's always trying to better themselves. It's a great place with some great people who also volunteer and the kids are imaginative and show love unconditionally. The local community was also amazing donating items, clothes, food, and money to help keep the facility running. Just shy of two years later, after many people coming and going, Karen appears. At first, she has a nice smile and is accommodating. The kids seem to love her a lot. 
until the jealousy started. Karen didn't understand for the last two years I've been doing volunteering even when doing part-time jobs I could find. So she assumed I was just recently new. So when the kids always came to me to give me hugs and tell me what they did that day and show off their art, well, Karen didn't like this. And she was jealous of my popularity with the kids. This started a spate of things happening. I was a smoker at the time. Not anymore. I quit about seven years ago. The best thing ever. So a rule was to make sure lighters, matches, and cigarettes were locked away in lockers at all times. This included medication, mobile phones, anything that could be a bad thing in the wrong hands. Although the kids would tell anyone if something that was sitting out in the open shouldn't be there was there, and we would put them away. But this one day, Karen had gone to the manager slash HR administrator to say that I had left my cigarettes out with my lighter, an electronic one, which was unique. I was busy that day, so I was apologetic as I could have easily forgotten it as you're kept off your feet constantly. But in the back of my mind, I had this nagging doubt that I'm sure I put them in my locker. Over four months, every two to three weeks, something else was left in the open or a door to the cleaning closet was left open after I'd used the equipment inside. Each time, Karen had gone to the manager or HR to narc about this. Karen has kids of her own that left after they hit 18, so at the time, I put it down to automatic motherly defensiveness for the kids. The following months, one of the girls, we'll call her Joe, not a real name, had burst into the room crying with blood flowing quickly from her nose. All the volunteers, including myself, instantly went to check up on Joe. She's looking flustered, looked at me and gave me a big yell and ran off to hide. When Joe was flustered or upset about something, she would always hide. But she would always come to me first to say why or to hint at why. But this time she didn't. And then Karen burst in. How could you do this to Joe? Devil eyes peering at me. I'm taken aback. What? Who? What do you mean? What happened to Joe? She replied, I can't believe I just watched you five minutes ago punch her in the face. And she rushed off to the manager in HR. I'm standing there aghast, unsure of what the hell is going on. Joe in the corner somewhere behind boxes, crying her eyes out. Some new volunteers looking at me as if I'm bad, and the other kids looking perplexed because I've never done this at all before. Even with Down syndrome, they understand most of what is going on around them. The manager comes in quickly, looking angry, which is understandable hearing what Karen told her. They asked me why I did this. This shocked me hard because here is the manager who has known me for the last two and a half years and instantly thought I could do this to the kids. I deny it, of course. I've been in the room for at least 25 minutes. The others couldn't corroborate as we were always busy and we don't notice small things like who's in the room and for how long. The manager goes to Joe and asks her. She looks at me and instantly sobs her heart out again and says with a stammering, yes. This hit me harder than the manager instantly thinking I could do this. Joe has been like a little sister who would tell me everything and always come to me when in trouble. So police were called, everyone given information. Joe was too scared and still in her place of hiding, so I was effectively let go pending an investigation. Hardly anyone gets reinstated after any type of investigation, but Joe's parents were seemingly at a loss for words and didn't think I could do this. And after talking to Joe on their own, they dropped charges. But the damage was done and I was asked to never come back. Later, I found out that Karen, through her jealousy, was telling other newer volunteer staff that I was touching up the kids, always hitting them, and leaving dangerous stuff about. She'd watched me at my locker, a digital number keypad type, and saw my pin for the locker and left things about, including the lighter and cigarettes. All because the kids would always come to me. Fast forward to 2009, after lots of rejections from other places for volunteering, one place was run by an ex-volunteer who knew this was all BS and gave me a chance. She was great and understanding. We would help all types of people in the community to do events for charities, etc. I enjoyed it very much. One day, the boss came to me and said, Oh, guess who's coming with kids today? Only god dang Karen. Since years back, Karen has moved up the ranks, so to speak, and had, through some rumors, forced the manager to quit. So one of the ex-volunteer who ran the place to help the kids put on a play so she can show off to a regional director who helps fund the facility I used to volunteer at. Oh boy, oh boy. Luckily, Karen never gets to see me. 
She talked to the person who runs the place I'm at now. Everything's arranged. And the kids would come twice a week for five months to work on and rehearse their play they would put on. Sort of real life situations that they would meet in their lives and how to overcome them. And among the eldest kids is Jo. She sees me and rushes over to me and hugs me to death, crying at the same time, saying, Sorry, 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 for what seemed like forever. I patted her head and said it was okay because I know she was coerced into it. It fit the scenario. Jo told me everything she could about Karen. Karen punched Jo, told her to blame me. She wouldn't. Then she got punched again in the same spot, this time with a threat to tell it was me or she would never come back here and go to the bad place, which was a publicly funded place which isn't really good. Light bulb moment, real life situation and how to overcome them. I got in touch with Joe's parents and they were so apologetic because Joe told them everything and they tried to tell the manager and HR before, but Joe's parents put it down as Joe not being sure and just wanting me back. So I told them of the play and if we could introduce Joe's experience with Karen as part of the play. They were hesitant at first, but after a couple of hours, I got a text on my phone. Yeah, go for it. Take that lying bitch down. So months go by. Joe knew not to tell anyone about the play. It was a secret. Then it was time for the big night. Room is packed. Other groups did their choirs, plays, artistic dances. Was a great night. I looked through the thick wine curtains at the stage to see Karen, looking all pleased with herself sitting next to the director. Apparently this was make or break for Karen. Please the director, get the manager position, which was a paid position and not volunteer. She was temporary manager and being paid, but this would solidify it. Then the kids came on. Each group did their own things. They were amazing and people were enjoying it. Some jokes here and there that helped the kids remember. Then Joe was last, a solo performance. Joe stood on the stage and in her best voice said, My time at the facility by Joe. I'm watching Karen through the curtain and she's looking perplexed, forcing a smile at the director who was loving it and was paying super attention to all the kids. Who wouldn't be if you're funding the kids? So I stepped to the side of the curtain and then eventually Karen's eyes met my face and I cheekily waved. And then her face became one of massive concern. Joe put on an amazing performance and the piece de resistance was her solo part about Karen. In the dark, with a light shining on Joe for dramatic effect, she mimicked what happened to her that day. That hurt me, Karen. Why did you punch me? You did this to me, not OP. Then she covers her nose again as if hit again. No, Karen, don't hit me again. I don't want to leave here. I'll do it. She stands up straight from her crouched defensive position and says, Karen told me to lie and say OP hit me or I would go to the bad place. <laughs> the director's face was unforgettable. He sat with his jaw literally hanging down and mouth agape. Karen was looking at me, at Joe, at the director back and forward, back and forward. And you could see her trying to figure out something to save herself. I just walked backstage, job done. Later, I high-fived Joe and told her, good job, you were amazing. She gave me the biggest, cheesiest grin with a thumbs up. It made me tear up. Karen blamed me for obviously making Joe say all these things and police were called again. But my boss didn't take her side of course and allowed me to remain. For years, Karen would always serve me up some weird summons to court for one thing or another. I would go and she wouldn't so I automatically won. Now there's a second pro revenge here. One of the girls who was at the facility when I was there was Meg. Again, not a real name. She had Down syndrome, but also MS, the sweetest girl ever. She was bullied by Karen to say stuff about me, such as touching her, but Meg would say no every single time. Even when Karen would pinch her badly on parts of her body, like her arms or the back of her neck. Meg's parents thought kids at the facility were hitting her and gave her a teddy bear she called Barry the Bear. Barry was special. It had a camera. So she would have the bear and if anything bad happened, she knew to press the bear's paw to start recording. Anyway, they forgot about it because Meg didn't have any more marks, etc. I guess Karen stopped tormenting her. But unfortunately, Meg lost her battle with MS March of last year and they were going through her things. 
and her father found Barry the bear and remembered why they got it. They went through what was recorded. Now, back then, things like this did exist, but they were heavy and expensive and didn't have much storage. Well, Joe was playing with Barry the bear as Meg allowed her to play with them. They were good friends. Joe must have accidentally pushed the paw to start the recording and on the recording, you could hear Karen in the background coming near. Karen had a policy of telling the kids not to touch things that's not theirs. So Joe must have feared that and put Barry on the shelf next to her. And we didn't see what happened, but it recorded the sounds, the threats, the audible strikes, the crying. So Meg's parents told me about this and that started me down the legal route to finally get Karen for good. It resulted in going to court and after a day, they found Karen guilty. She was banned from working with kids, placed on a register which records violence against children for 15 years and was fined $50,000 and was to pay damages to me, Joe and Meg's parents. Unfortunately, the stigma I received back then never did go away, and I can't still go back to the facility to volunteer even after the truth, but that's okay. I'm currently going to start another new job and will volunteer on weekends. But I know that Karen and her ambitious jealousy is now having the worst time ever. Everyone in the community knows what she did, and she's become a bit of a recluse and hardly ventures anywhere. Oh my God, if you get convicted of physically abusing a girl in a wheelchair with MS and Down syndrome, I think at that point your only solution would be to leave the country. What an absolute piece of garbage. That was r slash pro revenge and if you like this video then don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I put out new reddit videos every single day.